It's a little bit different. First question comes from our Discord, and it's for, it says, question for people who work at schools, were you summative assessment tests? For example, NFER, Puma, although I'm sure others do exist. Do you report the results of these tests to pupils or parents? And if so, what form does this take? See, I'm in the, I'm in the great situation where right now where I don't work in a school, so I can say, haha, I don't. So fairest thing to do is me to think about the way that we used to, uh, like, used to do these things in the past. Generally, no is the answer. We don't report these things. Um, we might talk about, we obviously use these to inform conversations about where pupils are at, you know, pet parents evening um, reports this kind of stuff but it would be a rare case where I'd be saying your pupil uh, your pupil your child is um, has a reading age according to this summative assessment of nine years and three months and they are actually nine years and seven months which means yada 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 very rarely would I be um, reporting that stuff directly to parents the exception to that would be SATs because parents are that much more invested in those results. So we tend to share those as soon as they're received. Don't know if that's different at your place, Lloyd, or anywhere you've worked. No, I think that's the same. I think you legally have to report the SATs, don't you? Do you have to give them the scaled scores? I think you have. You're not allowed not to, I think. There's um, a slip that gets printed out from... Yeah, from the DFE. It's, yeah. right, it's, you generate it via the... Oh, that was a whole... The DF, I've just got, I've just had awful flashbacks of the yeah. DFE hold music. <laughs> I can, like, that gives me PTSD. So I can't, I can't, <laughs> it's invoking awful memories for me of like hours sitting in the office trying to get through to somebody. Anyway, anyway, but yeah, no, I, I'm w- with you, with you 100% on that question. Like, we wouldn't, we wouldn't give out the, the scores of summative assessments. We, we like I say, we obviously would use those in, in people progress discussions and, to, to you know look at it as a signal built up with other things the te- you know the, uh, the the knowledge from the teacher the, the all, all the other the attendance all the other bits and pieces that we would say you know f- the feed into to give a signal of where a child is with a particular subject um but no tests perfect and i think it's uh, it's really important to remember that and i think it's important that you know we, what we can't do is to stop a child going home and saying, yeah, I did this on a test or that, you know, I got this or I, I, this went well, this went bad. Uh, uh, you know, we can't hide it from parents. They know they've sat tests. So I think it's, it's you know, you can't, you can't shy away from that. But what, what you can do is try, uh, what I would su- suggest potentially is, is, is do what I've just said there and, and explain to them, you know, that the tests are, no, tests are, are problematic by their very nature and performance versus learning and, and this all, you know, and this 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 whole side of things, and try and explain that, and maybe in layman's terms to to a parent, you know, just say, it, it, you know, it's not that they don't matter; they do matter. They they feed in, but again, to use the analogy that I think it's um, uh, Jamie Pembroke uses in terms of that signal, the signal through the noise. Um, so yeah, that's probably where I'd sit on that. I mean, one of the things about them, you know, in terms of validity and reliability and stuff, is the idea that. Sometimes there can be no stakes for pupils. And obviously, if there are no stakes, well, I'm not going to bother. Is there ever a situation where you sit down and say, look, you've scored four marks in this test. We know you know more about mathematics than this would suggest. Would you, you, know, would you ever use that as a motivational tool? You know, to say, you know, you're much better than this. I don't know if I'd phrase I've, it in those exact words. I've certainly asked children to sit a test again because they weren't in the right frame of mind, um, because something, you know, you realise afterwards that, you realise at the end of that day that they're not, they've not been well. There are all kinds of circumstances where I, I've said to, you know, actually give this another crack. But then I, you know, going back to Lloyd's point about tests not being, um, assessments always being imperfect in their attempt to try and work out where a pupil's at with a given um, subject or a given capacity. You can you can do that, but you then have to bear in mind that okay, they've probably already seen this test. This means they've had a little bit of extra time on it and this kind of stuff. So you might then adjust. There are exceptions to the you know not tending to inform parents. Uh, again, as Lloyd says, we're not hiding this stuff. If a parent says to me at the start of the year, I, I know you know I know my kid's going to do loads of assessments. I really want to know how he's getting on with them or how she's getting on with them. Fine. I'm happy to communicate it if asked, but as Lloyd says, big effort in uh, is going to be made to say, 
bear in mind that these are um yeah these aren't going to give you a particularly accurate picture it's perfectly possible for a child to for it to look like on the basis of a single test like they've not made progress just as it's possible for it to look like a child has made ridiculous progress so yeah you have to if if, if you do have a parent or carer who asks that stuff you've got to get in early and say bear in mind that this could show incredible progress or reverse progress because yeah it's one data point and there is a lot of to use your phrase or to use James Pembroke's and other people's phrase there's a lot of noise in that signal I think I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit on that in I know you said about potentially getting in early and saying if they request it what happens though when then another parent gets wind of it well you told them they had it can I have it how weird does it end? Then siblings, oh, they've been told about it. So for, from just from my with my leadership hat on, yeah. having a party line of we don't do this as a school, is that maybe a, a way where we can prevent teachers being in a difficult position? Because well, you said they they did it. I actually had experienced that at my previous school. I had a teacher give that give back a paper to a parent to go through the because they requested it and said oh, i'd like to go through the mistakes noble very you know great parental engagement however opened a can of worms because then we had i mean i wasn't i wasn't in the leadership of that well i was in leadership but i wasn't in the position where i was making the decisions on that at that point and 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 i saw it unfold in a bit of a nasty you know it got a bit ugly so i i you know i'm not sort of yeah no i don't I, but i, I get where you're coming from yeah. i get where you're coming from i would say uh if you have a consistent position on it as a school obviously as a teacher stick to it if that position is isn't clear or if the position is if parents ask for test results or you know test papers that kids have done if as a school your position is if they ask for it they're entitled to it then stick to that so it might be one of these situations where if a parent asks, you go to a member of SLT first and say, actually, but generally it's pretty rare that from my experience, the parents want the detail on this stuff. And if you feed it back, and like if, 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 let me give you an example. If a parent then came to me and said, well, you've given that information to that parent. Why haven't you given that to me? The simple response is, oh, here you go. <laughs> if you ask, you can have, I'm not, as long as it isn't something that's kind of generating um, like large amounts or any work for the teacher, then I, if, and if it doesn't kind of contradict the school policy that says otherwise, I don't see a problem with them going, no, I'm happy to feed that back. You can always caveat that with the reason why we don't tend to feed it back is the same reason I gave to this other parent or carer, which is we don't think that as individual results, it actually is a particularly useful thing. The reason it's useful to us is it gives us views across a whole cohort it gives us views across a whole year group across a whole school which is where we get a more reliable way of looking at things so yeah i mean again as i say if there's a, if there's a consistent school policy stick to it if there isn't it might be worth asking slt but if in doubt my view is there it's not a piece of information that i'd be that worried about not sh about sharing with parents yeah it could be one depending on your demographic i think that could be a yeah a, a that is a good point I imagine in a private school, you would be like, we feed this back to everyone or no one. Shut the door on that. Whereas this why, it's why I raised it, because yeah. my current school versus my previous school's demographic are very different. So, <laughs> yeah, no, no, I get that. Yeah, I get that. I, that is that might just be me revealing the context that I've worked in.